anime has a long and rich history filled with innovative, creative people. However, like with everything else, there have been moments in anime history that were met with nothing less than scorn and outrage. Rising of the Shield Hero, another in a long line of recent isekai shows, takes this in another direction entirely. In the first episode, we have our main character not only robbed, but has a false accusation leveled against him that lands him in deep trouble. Now, the timing of this is everything, especially with Western audiences amidst the hashtag MeToo movement. Some people thought this was in poor taste, while others thought that it represented a very small amount of incidences. Regardless, people were up in arms on both sides of the aisle at the very idea of a woman faking an allegation, as the very act of faking one hurts all parties involved. SAO has been no stranger to controversy and making fans uncomfortable, but this latest iteration is pushing it to a whole new level. In the third season, Sword Art Online Alicization, Yu-Gi-Oh! is put in a trap where he's forced to watch two female friends be sexually assaulted by two bullies. The two made it so that they could have their way with the girls, and Yu-Gi-Oh! could do nothing but watch. The scene in question has been censored on a few streaming platforms, and plenty of fans weren't happy with how this scene played out. Especially since this wasn't the first time SAO has used sexual assault as a cheap plot point. While the author has apologized and will be more mindful of scenes like it, it doesn't seem anime that have graphic imagery. For some, it's the focal point of the show, but there are other anime that call into question how much is too much. The debate in controversy might have been over a year ago, but Goblin Slayer was at the center of some hot debates and outrage among some in the community after its first episode aired. The first episode in question has a scene where one of the minor female characters is sexually assaulted. The scene is graphic and very upsetting, with most if not all viewers in agreement of that. Arguments and debates sprang up all over the place from Reddit to Twitter on the scene in question, and the gratuitous nature of scenes like this. While some people found a compromise, others didn't return 80 from people's favorite to people's most hated show. While it can be agreed that Darling was always destined to be bad, there were some moments before the end that could foretell the series' inevitable decline. Putting aside the awful ending in third arc, the episode that made even diehard fans riot online was episode 14. This centers around the love triangle between Ichigo, the childhood friend of the show's protag, Hiro, and the mysterious manic pixie dream girl, Zero Two. Episode 13 built up Zero Two and Hiro's relationship quite a bit, to the point where Z2 admits she sees Hiro as her true love. Ichigo physically separates the two, then confesses her love for Hiro and kisses him, which causes an outrage from fans who are on Team Zero and Team Ichigo. Trying Fan's Patience, known as the infamous Endless Eight. This refers to an arc in the second season where the entire cast is stuck in a Groundhog Day-style time loop for eight episodes. The episodes were more or less the same exact story animated eight times. In the manga, Haruhi wishes for an endless summer, and because she's God, she unknowingly bends reality to have summer repeat before Kyung can break the cycle. This was recreated in the anime pretty faithfully, but fans weren't happy that eight full episodes depicted the same thing over and over again like some sick prank. The episodes are still talked about to this day, with running jokes and memes still being in trouble. Classmates, he wrote in a book titled Death Note. Death Note was a tour de force anime that's regarded as perhaps one of the best drama slash thrillers. It's by every sense of the word a classic, even receiving its own hilarious Netflix adaptation. Death Note, to put it briefly, is about a bored high school student named Light who finds a magic notebook that, when someone's name is written in it, ends their life. Now, you take a popular anime in 2007 watched by angsty teens, and you're just asking for people to create their own Death Notes from a spiral notebook and write down the names of their bullies and parents. This was one that people weren't hopping on the bandwagon for.